Okay, so now our users in the application can go to our pricing, check out one of the two prices, and redirect to the Stripe checkout. Then, after inputting the card information and submitting it to Stripe, they will be able to perform the transaction. So they will be able to subscribe to a plan. Let's have a look at how it will be. So let's wait for the processing to finish. Okay, we kind of had a successful transaction. So Stripe charged our plan, we were directed to our posts, but you see the plan wasn't updated and the subscription status is still incomplete. But if we go to our billing portal, what will we see? We will see that we are actually to subscribed to even more than one plan at the same time. So on the Stripe side, we are subscribed, but on our application side, we are not subscribed and our subscription status is not active. Well, at this point, we want to have more communication between our application and Stripe. We want Stripe to be able to tell our application that we have subscribed and that the subscription status should be set to active. And for this, we're going to use webhooks. Now, webhooks are a way for external applications, APIs to communicate and send post requests into your application. So when we subscribe to, uh, to a plan on the Stripe side, Stripe will send a webhook with a post request to our application saying that this customer has subscribed and that his subscription status should be set to active. So now let's implement these webhooks. Now, if you go into the webhooks documentation, you will see the example code for Ruby and for other languages. So we're going to implement something like this into our webhooks controller. So let's create a webhooks controller. We will go to our app controllers. We will create a webhooks controller dot RB. And what do we have in this uh, building a webhook endpoint documentation? So we have uh, an example of making a post request. And here we use this code to decode the webhook that has been sent from Stripe to our application. And then we have, so when payment intent succeeded, when payment method attached, we can perform some kind of manipulations with the database in our application. Now let's get more practical and actually create this webhook. Now, I'm not going to type it all by hand, and I don't recommend you to do it either. You can go to the readme, and in the readme there is a section named webhooks, and here we have this webhooks controller, an example of webhooks controller that you can copy and paste here. And let's have a quick look at it. So first of all, we say skip before action authenticate user. We basically say that the application can skip device, because if we don't have this line, then uh, the Stripe webhooks will send post requests into our application and hit device saying that there has to be an authenticated user who can access the, web, the webhooks controller. Next we say skip before action, verify authenticity token so that uh, we can send cross-site requests. Next we have this code for decoding the request from Stripe and in the end we have uh, different types of webhooks that Stripe sends. So a few of them can be checkout session completed, customer subscription updated, customer subscription deleted, or customer created, and so on. So for example, we'll, ha we'll have these two webhooks. And we will see that uh, there is a webhook and event sent from Stripe where we have uh, the current user, and uh, if it is successful, then we update the user's subscription status to active. And if the subscription was updated or deleted, we will once again update the user's subscription status. So let's uh, try to make this work and then we'll, we'll go deeper. Now we have added our webhooks controller and for it, we also need to add a rule. So we will uh, add resources webhooks only create and add it in our roots. Okay, and uh, now let's uh, go to our Stripe dashboard and you see here in endpoints, we can create a webhook endpoint. 
So we're going to create a new endpoint for your Heroku application, SAS blog.herukuapp.com slash webhooks. And if we go to our roots in our application, we can see webhooks. And whenever a webhook is sent to our webhooks with a post request, we will trigger this uh, create action in our webhooks controller, this one. Okay, so we have this endpoint and we will say receive all events and add endpoint. And you see we were given a sign-in secret. So this is the webhook API key. And we're going to add it in our credentials. Editor Vim Rails credentials. Okay, now I will say webhook and add this webhook key. Save and exit. So we have added the webhook and we need it here in this uh, request header to decode the request. So you see we said Rails application credentials dig stripe webhook. And we need to have this webhook API key to decode the message sent by Stripe and to actually receive it. Okay, so we have added our webhook secret. We have added our webhooks controller. We have added our root for post to webhooks create. And we have created a webhook endpoint on the Stripe dashboard. Now let's see if it works. I will save our changes, get status, get add all, get comment main, uh, add Stripe webhooks. I will push and push to Heroku and see if it works. For now, I'll pause the video. Okay, so we have pushed to Heroku and let's see if it works. I will open the application. Now I already have some kind of current customer. Anyway, I will log out and create a new customer. Sign up. Email, password, okay. We created a Stripe customer ID. And now let's try to go to pricing and to checkout. I will select the plan with 10 USD per month. So I press checkout. Once again, I add the credit card information and subscribe. And now I expect to process the payment with Stripe. And if it is successful, Stripe will send the uh, uh, post requests to our webhooks controller and update our subscription status. And you see it actually happened. So there is a plan good month and the subscription status is active. So we successfully managed to pay uh, for our plan and change our subscription status. And you see, now we see all the posts, both free and premium. And we can go to our billing portal and have a look. So you see, we are subscribed to the plan, good, 10 per month. Now let's try to update our plan. Let's select the yearly plan and continue. And you see, we need to pay an additional $90 and we will be automatically charged by the previous card. So we don't need to input the card information once again. You can also change the payment method if you like or cancel the plan. But now we have updated our subscription and let's go to our application and have a look. You see, we have changed our plan and the subscription status is still active. Now let's try to cancel our subscription. I will press cancel plan. Canceled. And now I will go back to the application and you see subscription status is canceled and I cannot see the premium posts. And let's have a look at our webhooks. I will refresh. And here we see a lot of webhook attempts that have uh, been successful. So for example, customer subscription deleted. We had this request sent by Stripe and you see we have ID, data object and many details. And if we look into our webhooks controller, we have this customer subscription deleted webhook and we have event data object. And from this event data object, we can find any nested attribute. Now this whole uh, 
this whole uh, message is called an event. So to find the billing cycle anchor, we would say event data object billing cycle anchor. To find the customer, we would say event data object and the uh, customer where is he and customer. So we find the user by the event data object customer and update the user with the subscription status and with the plan. So that's basically how our subscriptions are working. And now let's try to write another custom webhook. Let's say we will want to update the user's customer ID in a webhook. So at the moment we have our user RB and after create, we create a Stripe customer. And then we, when the Stripe customer is created, we update the current user's Stripe customer ID. And we can try to move this logic partially into the webhook. So for example, let's create a new customer in our production application. I will go out and create a new customer. Sign up. I have signed up. We have been assigned a Stripe customer ID. And if I go to our webhooks and refresh, I will see that there was a new webhook that was triggered named, uh, let's see, named customer created. So we created a customer with this email address. And now we can say that uh, when Stripe creates this customer, then Stripe will send a post request into our application to find a user with this email address and assign him this customer ID. And this way we will not have to wait uh, uh, for the Stripe response in the after create action. So let's try to do it. Let's say we will add a new event named van and the event type is customer.created. Customer.created. So when customer is created, we will have, uh, let's say, customer equals event.data.object. Why did they say event data.object? We have this whole event dot data dot object and the object is a customer and we have this id and we have this email so let's find the user by the email so we'll say at user equals user dot find by email and the email will be customer dot email and we will then update the user user dot update and we will say stripe customer id so we will move this logic out. We will say Stripe customer ID will be the customer dot ID. So it will be this ID, event data object ID. And this way we will try to move the logic into the webhook. And here I will just add a comment that uh, moved to webhook. And let's see if it works. I'll now once again save the changes and push to Heroku. Okay, we have pushed to Heroku and now let's try once again. I'm going to the application, I will log out and create a new user. Let's say sign up. Okay, password, password confirmation and sign up. And you see, we do not have a Stripe customer ID. Let's go to our webhooks and have a look. So I just signed up and I do not have a Stripe custom ID. This is a bit strange, yes? Let's go to our webhooks and see. We had a new event, customer created, and a customer for this email was created. And now I refresh, and I still don't have the Stripe custom ID. So something must have gone wrong. Let's have a look, message success, but uh, the customer wasn't assigned an ID. He wasn't assigned this uh, ID. Let's uh, find out why. And the reason is simple. So you see, I have the name customer.create, but the webhook's name is customer created. So the webhook was delivered, but it wasn't uh, found by our application because I mistyped the name of the webhook. So now I'm going to update it and it should work.
Okay, we have pushed to Heroku and now let's try to resend this webhook. I will go to settings and press resend. It was resend. And now let's try to refresh in our application and see if we were assigned the Stripe custom ID. Yes, it happened. Okay, so now we have fixed our webhooks. And just one last time, let's try to create a customer with a random email and send a webhook that would update his Stripe customer ID. You see, it happens asynchronously. So I just created my account. I still don't have a Stripe customer ID, but uh, in a few seconds, I'm assigned it by Stripe. So this kind of uh, uh, logic can help us uh, work more asynchronously with Stripe. We send a request to Stripe and we don't wait until uh, Stripe uh, performs the request. But when Stripe does finally perform the request, we get this update in our application. So this is the main point that you need to know about webhooks. And now we have an application where users can go to pricing, select a price, check out, and uh, see the posts both premium and uh, uh, not premium. And uh, in our billing portal, the customer can manage his subscription. And basically we are done with our software as a service blog application where users can subscribe and see the premium posts or stay unsubscribed and see only the free posts. So thank you for being with me throughout all this journey. I, help, I really hope it helps you in developing the application of your dreams. And uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and so on.